Good afternoon. Coming up on tonight's programme. I'll be here at St Andrew's Church talking to members of the Nottingham Stroke Club about recent statistics. And I'll be finding out all the lowdown about the Super Bowl Sunday right here in Nottingham. <laughs> And I'm here in the heart of Nottingham City Centre talking to Jonathan Turner, partner at Together Agency, about the commercialisation of Valentine's Day. Hello, you're watching CBJ News at half past four. I'm Patsy Bowler Hyset. And I'm Connor Halliday, also on tonight's programme. And I'm at the city ground where we'll be talking about all of yesterday's transfers later in the show. But our top story tonight, new data from Public Health England has revealed that the average age of people having a first time stroke has fallen over the past decade. The group have warned that strokes don't just affect the elderly and urged more people to be aware of the symptoms. Lily King reports. Lots of us think strokes only affect older people, but a study out today shows this isn't necessarily the case. Public Health England have revealed new data showing that strokes are affecting more young people than ever. At 30, I had a, a mini stroke, GIA, that was caused by smoking and being on the pill. Strokes happen when the blood supply to the head is cut off and are the most common cause of premature death and a leading cause of disability in the UK. Over the past decade, the average age of first strokes has fallen from 71 to 68 for men and 75 to 73 for women, while the amount of first-time strokes suffered by 40 to 69-year-olds rose from 33% to 38%. The, fir the first stroke was um, three years ago um, and it was quite distressing really. I keep having strokes and it's a constant battle. I keep having little ones and I've had three big ones. But hey, life's for living and I, I'll never give in to it. Nottingham Stroke Club has been running for 36 years and members meet each week. The organisation, run by volunteers, offers a space for stroke victims of all ages to take part in exercises, participate in board games and also enjoy a general knowledge quiz. Our youngest, the, the youngest member that we have had here who is now fully fit and, and uh, holding a job down was 21. It was started as an outreach from uh, the church. Having a stroke um, isolates you. Around 57,000 people suffered their first stroke in 2016. Public Health England is urging people to use the Act Fast campaign in the event of a stroke. The acronym is a simple way to remember how to proceed if someone is suffering the symptoms. Face, has the person's face fallen on one side? Can they smile? Arms, can the person raise both arms and keep them there? Speech, is the person's speech slurred? T, time to call 999. With statistics rising, the NHS encourage a healthy lifestyle to prevent a stroke, including exercising regularly, eating a balanced diet and avoiding smoking and excessive amounts of alcohol. Lily King, CBJ News. People with disabilities face an uphill struggle finding work, but now a project in Nottingham helping young adults with disabilities to gain work experience. The Pulp Friction Smoothie Bar is recruiting people with and without learning difficulties to work alongside each other and learn together. Jiao Jo reports. Pouring water, mixing with coffee powder and any milks, Joey makes a cup of coffee neatly and serves it to his customer. It has never been an easy thing for people like Joey because of their learning disability before they get training from poop friction. Because uh, I'm working here on third Sunday and I'm paid and unemployed for doing work here. So uh, I think it's really good that I've like, learned quite a lot off what from skills and doing other things and getting used to doing different stuff and things like that. Located in the National Justice Museum, Poop Friction Smoothie Bar Project is a social organisation in Nottingham which provides opportunities for young adults with learning disabilities to develop work readiness, social and independent skills. Well, having worked with um, these particular young people for two years now, 
um, I know that they have skills that the workplace is missing. Um, all of our young people have different diagnoses, they have different level of abilities, but with the right support, um, they work really hard, they bring enthusiasm, they bring commitment. Members in it not only benefit from it financially, but also enjoy working here because of the fun, friendly and supportive environment. It's fun and also it's like a second family. I was in another job for five years and I wasn't happy. And I actually left my paid job to come to Pulp Fiction. It didn't build my confidence up. I've been um, involved with Pulp Fiction. Into, I've been involved with Pulp Fiction since 2010. I'm in part of the Atmosphere Glee Choir, so I've been involved since then. People nearby visit and have fun here frequently. Um, I'm in here probably two or three times a week. Um, I work upstairs in, in the offices, so it's sort of always good to come down, grab a sandwich and get a cup of coffee. Well, obviously, um, I mean, it's very handy for me, but the people are incredibly nice. The staff in here are phenomenal. The food's great, and they do a really, really good cup of coffee. That's it. I mean, they are very, very friendly, and other places, people are just sort of doing a nine-to-five, whereas in here, they know they're getting something out of it, and they're doing some good, and I think that's one of the best things about it. Jojo Jo reports from CBJ News. A new initiative from Nottingham College is providing free haircuts for the homeless. Students will be providing the service at the Your Look Hair Salon near the Old Market Square. The scheme is being tried out until June this year. Gemma Donaldson has been to find out more. Nottingham College's student hair salon Your Look, located off Old Market Square, has been offering discounted haircuts to the public since opening. Now the salon wants to give something back, not only to its students, but its community too. Homeless people are now able to receive a free haircut from the salon with their new VIP cards. The student lecturer Rob looks after them at the salon, guiding them through their cuts. We allow uh, people to come in off the street to have their haircut, get a free haircut, which works both for giving something back to the community, but also mainly for the, the students, gives them a platform to work on real clients that um, are probably a little less forgiving than somebody who's probably paying for their haircut. Nevertheless, they're still st uh, sent out with um, perfect haircuts and I think they enjoy their experience here. The students are trained on all aspects of hairdressing, including colouring, styling, cutting and mannerism. Both Rob and Kirsty, who is the coordinator of the salon, believe teaming up with charities in Nottingham to encourage free haircuts for the homeless is not only a benefit for the customer, but very rewarding for the students too. We have given these out to um, Emmanuel House and to various other homeless charities around Nottingham. And what they do is they hand these out to the homeless and vulnerable people that they know and that gives these people a chance to come in and get a free cut and blow dry with our students on certain set days. Your Look also has its own barbering section which offers not only cutting and styling for men but shaving or facial hair too. The salon is equipped with the best tools possible for the students to learn in. Anyone that is homeless can receive a card by visiting the salon and requesting one from reception. The cards have been available since September 2017 and will be valid until June this year. Gemma Donaldson, CBJ News. A man has been charged with the murder of a pedestrian who died when she was hit by a car on Monday morning. 51-year-old Janet Scott from Arnold was pronounced dead at the scene on Peel Street. Simon Mellers, who's 56 and from Nottingham, has been charged with her murder as well as the attempted murder of a man who remains in hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Mr Mellers appeared at Hull Magistrates today. Uh, a 39-year-old man has also been charged with the murder of a woman in Mansfield. Nottinghamshire Police have identified the 44-year-old woman as Paula Harris. She was found dead on Monday. Michael Foster appeared in front of magistrates today and he will appear at Nottingham Crown Court tomorrow. Arson court cases across Nottingham have risen by almost 30% in the past year. Three weeks ago, a fire was set at Nottingham's train station, which caused disruption throughout the whole of the East Midlands. No arrests have been made yet. Nottingham's fire brigade unions say the increase is alarming. 2018 marks the 18th year of annual National Storytelling Week. Events are taking place across the country in a bid to promote the oral tradition of storytelling and the importance of reading. 
Our reporter Izzy Lee went to find out more. The importance of reading has been expressed to those living in Nottingham as National Storytelling Week has been celebrated and the programmes at Nottingham City Libraries aim to encourage people to get reading from a young age. We've got several projects but one important project for us is our Bookstart programme um, which um, promotes books to uh, babies and to toddlers and in there um, you get a free book but also you get um, some tips on how to read stories to children and why it's so important to read to children. Um, it's, uh, there's lots of evidence on the Bookstart website saying how um, children are ready for school um, and more ready for school if you like if they've been read to um, and have better um, language and communication development than those children that haven't been read to. Research from organisation Book Trust talks about how reading books to children at an early age has the power to enrich the literacy, like Jules of 17 months. I started bringing her to the library when she was about six weeks old and uh, I used to just read the stories to her and she would sort of look at the pictures and as we've sort of come along we've looked at books with more words, more pictures um, and just recently we've started looking at shapes books and numbers and colours and before she would just run around and we sort of, I'd still be talking to her and she'd be taking it as, as I'm reading the story and just recently now if you ask her to sort of sit down and read a story with you she'll sit and she'll follow along with her finger and she'll she'll re help to read the book and she'll anything that she recognises she'll explain to me that she can see things like animals and shapes and things like that and so I've definitely seen an improvement with the books that I don't think would have been there without it. National Storytelling Week also highlights how reading widens perceptions of the world and life experiences. If you're reading books then you're getting lots of different points of view it's widening your experience. You can be taken to different cultures, different countries, different points of view and have experiences that in your everyday life you just wouldn't have. It is clear books benefit us in lots of ways and reading is a beneficial exercise to our everyday lives. Izzy Lee, CBJ News. Love it or loathe it, Valentine's Day is two weeks from today. Businesses around Nottingham are prepping for the 14th of February with a range of deals, but some say the day may have become overly commercialised. Pandora Forsyth reports. It wasn't that long ago that Valentine's Day meant buying a card for your loved one and perhaps a bunch of flowers or a box of chocolates. Not anymore. We seem to be spending a lot of money on this day. The days of a simple card and a box of chocolates being sufficient on the 14th of February seem to be long gone. On average, men spend £40 on their partner on Valentine's Day, whereas women spent an average of £24. We wanted to investigate whether this change was behind marketing campaigns and businesses making this day more commercialised. We spoke to a marketing agency in Nottingham to investigate further. There's a whole industry around Valentine's Day and um, you know trying to extract some money from your wallet. Our insights show that actually when a guy is buying on behalf of uh, a girlfriend uh, or, or partner, wife, um, what they're doing is actually trying to make a statement about themselves, about how much they care, how much they love somebody, how much they think about them. So it's actually all about them. And what I would suggest is rather than just use Valentine's to show that you love somebody, maybe just pick a spontaneous day um, any time in the week and show that affection by buying a very small present in the gifting market, whether you're um, maybe into flora selling flowers, whether you're um, a retail chain of pubs or bars. They rely on these days in the year um, as part of their business. Sales of lingerie double on the run-up to Valentine's Day. We popped into a lingerie store to ask why this is. In terms of us as a company, we don't tend to steer our clientele towards Valentine's Day. It tends more to be, because we're quite a niche market, it's women doing it for themselves. I would say shops promote it a lot more than they ever used to, personally. I find there is quite a few of an influx of people coming in like, I just need something sexy and red for Valentine's Day. But what do the general public think about Valentine's Day commercialisation? It celebrates the relationship you have with the person, also makes you think of love with your family. I personally think it's for business reasons also. Top gifts women want now. 13% want jewellery, 15% want spa treatments, 17% want a car and 27% want a holiday. 
Sentimentality versus expenditure, a battle between the consumer and the business. Pandora Forsyth, CBJ News. Now, as you might have noticed, juicing has become the latest trend for gym goers and health fanatics. So, of course, Nottingham has to have a cold pressed juice bar. Samara Aslam reports. Juicing offers many life-enhancing health benefits including a faster, more efficient way to absorb immune-boosting nutrients naturally found in fruit and vegetables. Raw juices and superfood smoothies are on the menu at Zero, a newly opened juicing bar located facing a gym in the heart of the city centre. Manager Marcus Taylor is pleased with the success of the business since launch day. You've got to franchise it, um, but short term we're just um, going to start doing food soon. We already do protein pancakes. So my friend, um, a few years ago, he went to the gym like hardcore. He lost a lot of weight and he did a lot of juicing at home. And so he took his recipes and ideas and he's you know, made the shop basically. Most fresh juices are created by using a centrifugal juicer. But Zero uses a hydraulic cold press with pressure plates to extract the juice from the fruit and vegetables. Also on the menu is vegan friendly juices made to order, superfood smoothies and body restore detox juices. Regular gym goer Angelo is happy with the vegan friendly protein available. To, to have as less chemicals in as possible, that's why I prefer to use a vegan protein. I uh, normally use some warrior at home, uh, which you can get from like um, whole foods and stuff like that. So it's really important for me to have a, like, a, a clean protein. Keeping it local wherever possible, the honey added to PB gains is produced by Nottingham Shabies. With juicing becoming so popular, celebrities Gwyneth Paltrow and Kim Kardashian are fans. Samara Aslam reporting for CBJ News. This Sunday marks the 52nd Super Bowl Sunday. What was once a sport confined to the United States is now a fast-growing global business. We sent our reporter, Eli Pengeli, to find out more. The Super Bowl lunch, baby! Super Bowl Sunday, one of the most watched sports games in the world. Nottingham Trent's Global Lounge ran an event to promote the diversity amongst its students and also encourage a wider audience to get involved with the sport. Although it's not an official American holiday, it's an occasion when many family and friends gather together to celebrate including those who are not normally American football fans. Um, a celebration for something that's culturally as important uh, in the US as, as maybe anything. Um, and it's growing in the UK as well. There's, as, as, uh, as I'm sure you've seen, there's been um, a growing popularity of the games in London. Uh, they've been going for about 10 years. They're selling out quick enough to selling out uh, huge stadiums here in the UK. Um, so it's important for us uh, as an international experience here, especially in the Global Lounge, to represent that in the events uh, that we do for us. In its first year, the Super Bowl attracted about 50 million viewers. Now, over 150 million people watch the game around the world. The event has also encouraged the expanding attraction to playing American football and practicing cheerleading within society. This year, we'll see the New England Patriots versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Despite the late start in the evening, events across the city have been selling out, and South Bank Bar is no exception. Overnight gig, tickets, five pound entry. Um, we've got 24 4K HD screens to show it on, as well as large grid to show it as well. Loads of tables. We uh, offer the booth package for 60 pounds, including six tickets, uh, two pitches of lager and a of Venues such as these will be packed with fans ready to watch the game unfold. Ella Pengeli, CBJ News. And now to the football and it's all changed over at the city ground. They've been busy as the Jan January transfer window has closed. We go live to our reporter Megan Wood with all the latest. Hi, uh, yes, exciting day yesterday for Forest fans. I imagine some of them are quite exhausted. It was probably one of the busiest transfer days they've had in a while, with seven players coming into the club and seven departures in total. Three permanent signings for Forest, though, Iranian international Ashkan Jagger and Joe Lolly from Huddersfield Town. Another familiar face coming into the ground, Adeline Gediora has joined on a two and a half year deal after being released by Middlesbrough. 
More players to tell you about, Costel Pantimolon, Jack Colback, and Tobias Figueiredo, who's a Portuguese defender. Uh, they're all on uh, season-long loans. As well, attacking midfielder Lee Tomlin has joined. He's come into Forest as part of a swap deal with Jamie Ward. Ward's gone to Cardiff until the end of the season. Also going with him, Traore, whose contract has uh, been cancelled by Forrest just a couple of hours ago. Um, I think that's about, that's all of the players. Uh, I think that's all the players to tell you about who are leaving, but players just going out on loan is keeper Stephen Henderson. Zach Clough's going back to Bolton until the end of the campaign and going with him is Tyler Walker. Mustafa Coriol and Matt Mills, has, uh, they both left Forest, but on a mutual agreement. Overall, I think Forest fans have been fairly happy with the activity, although a few of them may have been left disappointed after there was rumours that Michael Dawson may be returning to the club. That didn't happen. That was left right to the wire on the 11th hour. As I said, hectic day, busy transfer window for Forrest. Um, Karanka proving that he's a man of his word. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks for that, Megan. And now for the weather. This evening will be dry but cold in a gusty northwesterly wind. There is a chance of some frost and patchy ice forming, with minimum temperatures at around zero degrees Celsius. Early tomorrow it will be cold, dry, bright and breezy, and that will continue for most of the day. Temperatures will peak at 7 degrees Celsius. Over the weekend we can expect cloudy, cold weather and there is even a chance of sleet or snow. And that's all for now. You can keep up to date with the latest news on Twitter at CBJ News. We'll be back at lunchtime tomorrow. Goodbye.